There is a, a lot of talk, of course, uh, continuing about chemtrails, and one of the most remarkable documentaries ever in the field is in its second incarnation. The first version, of course, what in the world are they spraying, and then why in the world are they spraying? Uh, Dane Wigington is with us now to talk about this, and he, of course, uh, intimately involved in this film. We'll hear more about that in a minute, but I want you to pay close attention to the special offer we have going. We'll be telling you about that in this hour as well. There are many areas of the country which are reporting uh, to me, directly or indirectly, that they are seeing heavy spring. Others are saying they haven't seen a thing. And it has been very light in the Pacific Northwest, at least portions of it so far. Uh, the weather systems, of course, haven't begun to move in yet. That is usually when they begin their heavier spraying. Of course, I've seen last year or two uh, obvious evidence of overnight spraying. You get up very early at first light, and I counted once nearly tw- I, is this 20 to 25, look like Venetian blinds. Uh, floating away off to the east of where I am located. So they're still at it. Uh, They're becoming more and more clever about it. Uh, But in really uh, uh, no uncertain terms, they don't care. Uh, People are now so used to seeing cruddy-looking skies, they just don't really concern themselves, it would seem to me. You get up in the morning, you used to see beautiful azure blue skies uh, with a few white clouds in the afternoons. Now you get up and you see junk up there just crud and you kind of well it's just an overcast day Uh, no it's not in many cases anyway let's uh, welcome Dane to the program hello there how are you good Jeff thank you thank you for addressing this issue Uh, it's my pleasure I I will remember always the first time I figured it out I'd heard about them and it was I believe 1990 late 95 that uh, about a year after I heard rumors of these things, early in 96, when they really began, I think, in, in somewhat earnest spring, I was laying, uh, looking up at the sky in a yard, and it was a beautiful blue sky, not a cloud in the sky, and a jet uh, came overhead, and behind that jet was, it looked like uh, two streams of cotton candy, and it did not dissipate, and it got bigger and fatter, and it melded together, and then it stayed there and slowly moved to the east. This was in Santa Barbara at the time. And I'll never forget that, and I knew right then and there that they were indeed spraying. So how did you get involved in all this, Dane? Well, it's certainly the last battle I ever wanted. I am not political in any sense. And um, when I uh, spent... uh, all my resources to get out of Southern California, to get out of the smog, move to the Pacific Northwest. I have a background in solar power. power. Um, I'm a former Bechtel employee. I know it's a four-letter oh, word really? now. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and I work in one of the first solar plants in the continental U.S. I have, a, I have a background in renewable energy. I moved to the Pacific Northwest. Uh-huh. I built a big off-grid home in the woods and expecting to live under <laughs> clear skies now. And, then... <laughs> and, and, and now I begin yeah. to see, you know, this this uh, solar obscuration. That's one of the terms used with SRM, solar radiation management, and SAG, uh-huh. stratospheric uh-huh. aerosol geoengineering. Uh-huh. When I begin to lose 60, 70, 80 percent of my solar uptake from whatever these jets were were, were putting out, I, I went to research and immediately came to the topic of geoengineering. Basically, you're a solar scientist, and you, you lose 60 percent. Uh, that's massive. So you knew something was up. Well, clearly... Uh, absolutely. I mean, there, what, what I saw in the skies uh, was not uh, a condensation trail. And again, when I discovered the mountain of data on geoengineering and virtually mm-hmm. every single dot connects, mm-hmm. uh, I began my water testing in Shasta County. We've done, I think, pressing close to 100 tests now in Shasta and Siskiyou County, the Pacific Northwest. We yeah, started I know your an, area code. I know about where you are. I'm, yeah, I'm we're, right. we're, I mean, we're in a, what should be a pristine area. Yeah. Uh, an initial lab test, Jeff, of seven parts per billion in a single rain event, which is already quite high. Mm-hmm. I spoke to a hydrogeologist who said there shouldn't be anything in the rain unless I live next to a, quote, Alcoa factory. We be- continued testing. Within five years, we had single rain events that had, as, that had an escalation of aluminum from that initial test as much as 50,000%, up to 3,450 parts per billion of aluminum in a single rain event. Literally toxic rain. Good Lord. Good Lord. Without the rain bringing it down, how how long will it hang up there, do we know? According to 
polymer chemists that I've spoke to, uh, descent times can vary from 12 hours to 24 hours, which isn't a long time. And again, we've also found barium, strontium, manganese, and, and so much of this has fallen in the Pacific Northwest. We, we acquired the original USDA soil baseline studies for pH in about a six, seven year period. We've seen soil pH changes here a magnitude of 15 times toward alkaline. It takes a lot of metal to do that. Wow. To the wow. And these are random tests from random locations. But but again, these are areas that, that there was a solid baseline from. Understand. The extre- yeah, Understand. Yeah, that, that's, absolutely. That's, that's invaluable. And you were very smart to procure that data. That's uh, that's it's priceless when you... I have the original manuals in my yeah. possession. And, and now, so go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. We have a solid baseline there. And again, if people understood the gravity of this, how much metal it takes to change the pH of a forest floor, what's it doing to our lungs? What's it doing to our, our organism as a whole? What's it doing to our brains? Come on, we inhale exactly. the stuff. It goes under our bloodstream, and I don't think the blood-brain barrier is going to stop this. It goes right in. It's like the old axiom, don't use underarm deodorants with aluminum-based elements. And they almost all have them, unless you look for all natural. You've got to be smart. But it was going right through the skin, and it was causing problems. That's the, Look, the absolute epidemic of Alzheimer's is no accident. Dementia is no accident. A lot of it, I'm here to tell you, is in fact mad cow disease. A lot of it, I'm here to tell you, also is in fact from aluminum overdosing. You can't help it. It just doesn't work with brains. It doesn't. And for, for those that uh, question, you know, why should we really believe this is going on? And, and I, would, I would give the following string of dots. I mean, you have about 150 geoengineering patents in total. Dozens have the primary ingredients that we find on every single test. The wow. primary wow. goal of these patents is, is exactly what we see in the sky, solar obscuration. So much solar obscuration has occurred in recent decades that now global dimming, a term that many are not familiar with, uh, global dimming over the entire planet is estimated right now to be about 20% overall, which means that That's 20% huge. of the sun's direct light is no longer reaching the surface of the planet. That That's is the goal of geoengineering. That's a massive change. That's, that's enormous. I'm shocked. I didn't know. So here's the bottom line. The geoengineers already know what they're capable of doing because they've already done it. It's not some potential experiment that's off in the future like you see in popular mechanics. One day we hope to do this. They know exactly what they can do. So those are red herrings. Of whenever course. Yeah, Those are red herrings that whenever they talk about suspending a, a, a hose into the stratosphere with balloons and space mirrors, that's just to, to try to marginalize this issue. The data we have, Jeff, would indicate uh, that this has been going on since probably the late 40s at a low level. And there were ramp-up periods. 99 was a ramp-up period, 05, 06, and then again in 08, 09, you know, just increasing all the time the, the level of spraying they're doing. And, and one of the reasons for that, perhaps, is the more they spray, the more damage they're doing. We have a massive, this is another symptom of geoengineering that no science disputes, virtually all the science, including from the geoengineers, states this will be a consequence, shredded ozone layer. And now we have a massive northern hemisphere ozone hole. This is in addition to the southern hemisphere hole that we've heard about for decades. Over, over the Arctic, yeah. That's correct. And they're, they're threatening to fire any scientist that talks to media. And this can be found online also or on, on the geoengineeringwatch.org website. Jeez. Uh, geoengineeringwatchdog.org. No, geoengineering, geoengineeringwatch.org. Watch.org, okay. Geoengineeringwatch.org. Geoengineeringwatch.org. Geoengineering okay, Correct. we got it. All right, very good. Uh, you want me to connect that to your name also? We'll put that up there if you want. If that's okay. uh, It is, yeah. Michael Murphy's involved with that site. Uh, Yvonne Noctegal and Mauro Oliveira. There's four of us. Right. But uh, we try to post, it's all geoengineering, and if people uh, want to get the latest data that we have, satellite photos. You, you mentioned, Jeff, the spraying over the Pacific Northwest. The in-your-face overhead trails have backed off. However, they've been blanket spraying the storm track northwest of us all summer long. We post uh-huh. satellite images uh-huh. on the site uh-huh. regularly where you can see grid patterns over the ocean, they are virtually shutting down the hydrological cycle. If anybody wonders why we have drought over the continental U.S., that's why. They shut the and, door. Oh. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that, and that science is very clear on that. I mean, there is no dispute. Particulates in the atmosphere diminish and disperse rainfall, period. So there, there's, there's absolutely no debate as to what's going on and what's causing 
the the drought. So, uh, well, you know, they, the, they, the Iranians are screaming that uh, the West is causing their drought. They're in a drought as well, and there's no doubt thing. about that. Sure. Same thing. You spray upstream and you shut it off downstream. That's it. Yeah. Yep. 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 This is all all true. All very sad. Um, give us that website again, geo. Geoengineeringwatch.org. All right, very good.